disguise the fact that they were horrendous tonight, yeah. by the way, Juventus. They were so bad. They're, They're lucky to get out of there with, a, with an yeah. away goal like they have. Yeah. What do you think uh, overall that Porto... That, I think both teams will be dissatisfied in a way. Well. I mean, Porto at the start would have probably taken that, but 2-0 up with not that long to go. Porto, I thought, played great. I thought they played really good. Better team, as Reece said. You know, I think if you're Juventus and you play that poorly and find a way to get an away goal, it gives them a huge chance going into the second mm. leg. But Porto were the better team, for yeah. sure. Juventus look, don't look like a Juventus side, yeah. really. Perfectly balanced. Perfectly balanced. That's it. If you're in the Juventus dressing room, yeah. I, I think they're a little bit annoyed because of the way they play. But when they get on that plane tonight and they go and they'll be thinking, we're still in this. And they yeah. won't be able to believe it because they were, they were awful. We didn't even see Ronaldo until that last little bit at the end. Um, disjointed. No, at the back they look like they could get opened up. So they'll be delighted when they land back in, mm. in Italy tonight that they're still in this tie. Mm, very much so. Uh, the Europa League knockout stage begins on BT Sport tomorrow uh, with, well, Brits abroad. Vital goal that uh, for Juventus gives them um, a real hope for the second leg in, uh, what, three weeks' time. And um, overall, it was, um, well, Porto were probably the better side. It's interesting that they scored two goals in such early stages of each half. Yeah, great time to score. Mm. Um, set himself on the right foot in the, in the first minute of the game, capitalising on a mistake. Um, but I think we spoke at half-time, the intent was there for them to pressure this game, press this team and really make them make mistakes, force them into to areas well, It didn't, didn't take play. long to make a mistake, did it, Joe? <laughs> yeah, I mean, listen, like, start of both games, Porto, look, they've gone to go in behind here. Once Juventus get hold of the ball control, they're thinking to themselves, it's going to be not like this area, we're going to spread out, we're going to play, we're going to build up from the back. Chesney makes a wrong decision here. I think he should go on to the right back. And here, Bentecourt, he just gets it all wrong. Oof. He just, he hasn't got the, you know, he's manager Perlo in that situation. He's got the pitchers, he's got the wing mirrors on. He doesn't see what's around him. There's a great angle. I don't know if we'll show it after this. I don't this know player. how he can't see him. <laughs> if you see it from this one here, he should play it to Chesney's left foot, yeah. clear the lines and, we, and we'll start the game. He's scattered with himself, but this angle, you actually see his head movement yeah. come in here, where he has a look to the left back, and he doesn't look, and he, that, that's a horrible feeling when you're midfielder and you play that loose ball and you've mm. cost your team a goal. But start of the game, it, it's yeah. it, all over the gaff they yeah. were. And then it, it happened again, Rio. If you had a look at this, the second goal, which happened, um, it was even quicker in the second half than the goal was in, in the seconds, first. 20 seconds, 20 You'll seconds. You'll see the clock on the top right-hand side of the screen here. It's, it's, Phenomenal. It, it, the team talk from Perlo obviously had a huge effect on his, <laughs> on his team for the wrong reasons, but we'll see. There's not much to, to, to worry about here, but once the ball goes here, you stop here. Even beginning, you, you think, right, let's get ourselves up the pitch, squeeze, squeeze it a little bit, get up, cover your, your, right, your, your full back, but staying that far back, even straight away, the impetus is on the other team, then you give them the advantage a little bit. The ball goes in, as, as straight away as he turns here, you've got a decision. You've got a decision as the centre-back. What do you do? Do you go to the man with the ball? Or do you follow the runner who runs in there? Or do you go on to the man here, as I said to you, with the ball? You've got to go to make a decision to go to one of them. If you don't do that, you might as well just eliminate yourself from the whole situation. Here, I'll show you, he does neither. What right, should you see that? Think? Which one? I would have gone to the man with the yeah, ball. Yeah. I would have gone to the man with the ball and just ushered him out down to the touchline. Here you see him now. He can't get close enough to the ball, doesn't back himself pace-wise. And now, if you look at the centre-half, he's got his back to the man who I'm circling here, Morega. He can't even see where he's running. So he might as well just take himself for that picture and just say, pass the ball or do what you want to do with it. I mean, in here, as a midfielder, defensive midfielder, Owen, what, what are you seeing if, well, you're, look, if, you, if you're this man Yeah, here? you're right. Benton Kerr and Rabio there, both of them. One of them can see De Ligt is probably too far across. You've got to get in and help him. I think if you're, if you're De Ligt as well, you can do both. You can, you can mark Morega and worry about the cross. I think if you go out to the ball, he's got an easy square to Morega. I think you actually have to go with Morega because if the ball goes wide, you can deal with the cross. But Benton Kerr and Rabio need to cover for De Ligt. And, and they've got to get, make that run in there. Get in there and cover that space. I'm saying go out to the ball earlier. This position yeah. here, you can't go out. I'm, I agree with you, but I'd have gone earlier to stop him even get his head up. Good play from Porto, though. Very good play. Great run from Morega as well. Very good run. And then once the ball's there and played inside, it's a fantastic first touch. Set, set his himself, slots it in. And you see there, look, numbers in the box there from the, in the orange shirts. It's phenomenal to have that many numbers in the, in the box, you can see, and not get a man anywhere near it. I mean, is almost criminal in that sense. Eight players. Mm. 
Footballer can count to eight. Well done. Yeah, yeah you done it well there, didn't I? <laughs> you had beautifully done, actually. Have <laughs> high praise. Um, massively important goal, Chiesa. Massively. And it, uh, it, with 2 0, the four are in big trouble. They're 2 0, big trouble. I think the tide's over. It comes from nothing. I, I'm not sure the cutback is meant for Chiesa here, but we actually had a little debate on it. I think this is an excellent finish because that cutting that. Mm. When the ball comes back to you there, Gary, you'll know the concentration. Bit, yeah. You just have to keep it down, and yeah. he's overcompensated. Exactly. He's hit it into the ground. Yeah. But he, most important thing, what you tell your forwards, hit the target. Mm. And it was it was so against the run of play. There was nothing in the game, and that goal is crucial because that that yeah. just keeps them alive. Mm. Right? Have we decided whether it was a penalty yet? No. I thought Ree's the only one. We'll know. <laughs> Ree might change his mind, to be Go fair. T tell us why it's a pen, Ree. It's a great ball. Because he's Ronaldo's mate. <laughs> yeah, but I just thought it was a great bit of skill. I was screaming when the, the bit of skill was. I thought if he gets back to that, it's a left foot, it's going in the back yeah, of the it's net. It's like he slips first. Though, he, he, he? Look, yeah. he's gone. He might have slipped, yeah. I mean, listen, I, I wouldn't have been surprised if it was a penalty it's, given. It's, it's not an obvious error, surely. And it's, not an, it's not an obvious penalty. We're sitting here debating it. It yeah. means it's not obvious. So, so uh, he's, listen, not totally he's not going to be happy with it. I'll tell no, you that on the way home. But what, I, what I was impressed with about one, the only thing I was impressed with with this Juventus team today is that they went 1 0 down, they went 2 0 down. It doesn't change, does it? Yeah. It's one goal. You get a goal back, no matter what, it's 1 or 2 0, yeah. you're back in the tyre. Huge, hugely different. Let's have a word with um, Peter Walton. Um, he's, he's in a little box up there behind me <laughs> over our right hand shoulder. Uh, Peter, yeah. your thoughts on that decision? Have they got it right? Yeah, I think they got it right. And the reason they got it right was because Ronaldo uh, traps the ball and his body momentum takes him away from the ball itself. He's beginning to slip over. Yes, there's contact. Can't deny there's contact. But not every contact is a foul. And the VAR is looking for a clear and obvious mistake from the referee. Mm. He doesn't have that evidence to provide him and therefore keeps out of it, quite rightly in my opinion. And the referee there gives a judgment call of no foul. And, and we are debating it. Yeah. OK, thank you very much for your input, um, Peter. Uh, as always, uh, we're going to turn our attention now to the um, other game that was played, um, which was also a uh, cracker, and that's also um, nicely in the balance, although obviously home advantage was uh, severe on this occasion, if there is such a thing.